Well, good morning and happy Easter. Happy Easter, folks. We've made it. It's the greatest day in the Christian calendar. The day that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, rose from the dead. It's so good to be with you this morning and, and to be outside. And, and I, I hope it's coming through as clear as it can be on your side. Now we're having some technical dif difficulties on our end, but that's okay. We're going to continue to make our way through it. And so uh, we want to say these words together as we, as we always have. And, and when I say, He is risen, you repeat, He is risen indeed. And that's why we gather here together. He is risen. It's so good to be with you. And I'm so excited to celebrate Easter. This is a weird way to celebrate Easter, but that's okay. Because even though the churches, the buildings might be empty, so is the tomb. And what a good day it is to be with you this morning. If you have your Bibles, I would love it if you would open up to the book of Luke, chapter 24. And we're going to look at some of the words uh, about this story, about this morning, about what took place uh, almost 2,000 years ago, right now at this part of the day. And so if you have your Bibles, look at Luke 24, and, and I will be reading it to you just in case. All right? Luke 24. And here's how it sounds. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of the sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. What a great day in history today is, the day that we celebrate. Now, do we know that it actually happened on this date? Or uh, We don't know. We know that it was around Passover. Uh, we do know that. Um, but we follow so many different calendars. Uh, the Jewish calendar, the Gregorian calendar, the, the, the Chinese calendar, the Roman calendar. It, I don't think the specific date matters. I think what matters is what happened, what took place, and what a joy it is that we get to celebrate the rising of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Mary and Mary and uh, the women ha had a specific reason for going to the tomb that Easter morning. They wanted to to pay homage to this man, and 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 the Sabbath was over. They were so they were able to now go back and and properly properly take care of his body, lay respect by by applying the proper spices and anointments to preserve the body, and they came with to the tomb with with great grief but with also a, a sense of duty and determination. I think I need to ask, our, ask myself, and probably I'm going to ask you the question too, why do we come to the tomb on Easter morning? I mean, it's early. Uh, most of us usually aren't out of bed at this time. If you have kids, you usually are. <laughs> but especially on a Sunday morning, most of us aren't out of bed yet. A preacher, uh, a preacher's son uh, asked him one Easter morning, Dad, can we have sunrise service on Wednesday evening? <laughs> Most of us come to the tomb on Easter uh, just as the ladies did that first Easter morning out of respect, out of honor. But they, 
I think at times we also come from some very, very different places as well. Some of us come to see the stone still in its place. We really don't know if Jesus is risen. We really don't want to know Jesus is risen. We come to worship at the burial site. We come to visit the grave. By leaving Jesus in the tomb, we can keep him in a little place that we can come and visit whenever we want. But but not having him intruding on our lives outside. We're the, we're the religionists. People like that make up about 25% of, of every congregation. We don't know the living Christ, but we respect who he was and what he stood for. So we come to the tomb and worship and we remember him, but we certainly don't want to see the stone roll away. Is that the person you are? Some of us come to the stone rolled away and, and, and we're terrified. What happened? Have the, have the Sanhedrin, have the, have the Pharisees, have they, uh, have they plotted and come and taken away his body and defiled it and, and, and all that good stuff? Why couldn't they just leave him alone? Or did Jesus really rise from the dead? I mean, did he do what he said he was going to do? We're not about to go in and find out, though. That's kind of scary. We'll simply stand outside the tomb and say, well, that's kind of a mystery. We'll leave it at that. Once again, we, we make up a big part of congregations. That group of people makes up a big part of congregations. We know the tomb's empty. We do know the tomb's empty. And we know what some people have to say about it. But we haven't really entered the tomb for our own, to find out for ourselves. This is secondhand Christianity. It's just what other people say, what other people experience, what they, that's good enough for us. We're really good church members, but we really don't care all that much about why the Christ was risen or why the tomb is empty. And on the other hand, some of us enter the tomb. We want to know what happened. We want to find Jesus dead or alive, we want to find him. We want to find out if Jesus was who we said he was. We want to find the truth so that, so that when we go to the tomb and we see the angels and we hear the proclamation that he's alive, we go and, and, and we, we take all these things inside of us and we look for him. We want to find Jesus. This is, this is the hardest group to be a part of. This is the toughest group to be part of. It's, it's an all or nothing proposition. If Jesus is who he said he was and said that he is, the son of God, fully God yet fully man, then we have to worship him. We must worship him. It's a strong demand with, with eternal consequences. And it's a scary place to be on an Easter morning. But even though it's hard, and it can be scary, we know that He is truth, and that He is the way, and that He is the life. Apart from Him, we're nothing. My prayer today is that this Easter, this Easter, I hope you'll enter the tomb, and you'll take the angel's message to heart. And then, when you exit the tomb, You'll find the living Jesus, and it will change your life forever. That's what Easter's about. Easter's about total transformation from dead to life. Guys, I love you. I appreciate you. I'm looking forward to spending more time today with you this Easter Sunday. I encourage you to invite your friends to come back. Uh, send out invites. Call them. Text them. Uh, and share with them these, these famous words that we all say all the time, back and forth. He is risen. And you repeat, He is risen indeed. Let's share that greeting over and over and over again. Amen? Well, I hope you have a blessed and happy Easter. I'm looking forward to, to spending time with you at, at 10 a.m. With, with Pastor Newell Smith as he shares and teaches a great Sunday school lesson this morning. 
And then we'll give you some time to refill your coffee and join back together at 1030 for Easter morning worship. All right, guys, make sure before 10 o'clock you have your communion elements ready, some type of bread or cracker and some type of, of juice or liquid. And we will celebrate in Holy Communion together at, at the 1030 service. All right, guys, love you, appreciate you. He is risen, and our response to that is he is risen indeed. Happy Easter. Many, many blessings. Goodbye.